the need for real solutions to people's issues, to the pre-existing problems of society, economic inequality, so structural racism, food insecurity, and food apartheid, the need for real solutions around food sovereignty and social justice is still there. And the fact that people rose up to actually activate themselves during the pandemic speaks to the solutions that we need to see. Good morning, this is Epicenter NYC. We connect our communities to news, information, and each other. I'm Andrea Pineda Salgado. I recently spoke to the team behind Los Sures Food Pantry in South Williamsburg. They normally serve around 1,500 people per month, but when the pandemic hit, everything changed. In April of 2020, nearly 6,000 people in need showed up. So Los Sures began collecting data. They made it their mission to learn as much as they could about their visitors in hopes of amplifying their stories. The results were staggering. 70% of South Williamsburg residents they surveyed said they were not okay when it came to their mental health. They were stressed, they were depressed, frustrated, worried, and anxious. But the Los Sures team also found another trend, the community's resilience. Today, a conversation with Zach Williams, the director of Los Sures Comida Food Pantry, who helped turn these stories into an art exhibit. It's called Sobre Slash Vivir, Superando la Pandemia en Los Sures. Before we begin, a quick message from our friends and sponsors at McKinsey & Company. The Shortlist is a weekly curated sampling of McKinsey's need-to-know stories about work, the economy, and culture. 60% of Black workers live in the South. So I think you are seeing companies start to say, why don't, instead of expecting diverse talent to move to us, why don't we open up a hub in a more diverse location? That's Brian Hancock from the McKinsey Talks Talent Podcast featured in a recent shortlist newsletter. He's discussing the future of work. For more of our best ideas, quick and curated, check out the shortlist at mckinsey.com forward slash shortlist. That's mckinsey.com forward slash shortlist. And thanks. Now, back to the show. Here's my conversation with Zach Williams. Should I do the mask off? Or? Um, however you feel comfortable. Okay. Uh, my name is Zach Williams. I'm the Comida Program Director at Los Suves. And how did you um, first get involved? Oh, man. I mean, when the pandemic hit, uh, we just sort of, like everyone else, we were caught yes, by surprise. And we started, started to do what we thought was, you know, the most immediately right things. Start social distancing, start shutting down operations. Um, but one thing that became very apparent right away was that people were going to have needs and their needs were increasing extremely rapidly. So we started distributing more food. We started getting calls um, from people donating food, organizations donating food, but also seeing way longer lines in our food pantry and other groups coming to us. So one thing we wanted to do was just understand it and not just respond to people in the moment for you know helping them deal with isolation, helping them deal with uh, getting access to PPE, hand sanitizer, whatever it is, food, but also have a larger understanding of, you know, the richness of their experience, what they were really going through, how they really felt. We did a survey, we did focus groups, and the responses we got made us, uh, impacted us in a big way and made us think we wanted to share this with people. And from there we thought, well, if we're gonna share it, let's have people share their stories in a new way. Let's have them submit objects or um, artworks or lottery cards um, with their own drawings that say something about how they got through the pandemic, how they survived, how they're still here, how they overcame. And why, you know, the data is really important, but why do something more? You know, there's a tendency sometimes for us to look at tragedies in the world and to not look at the strength people have or the ways they came together or the fact that despite all that adversity, they're still here. You know, this is a neighborhood, Los Sures, the south side of Williamsburg, has experienced disinvestment, landlord abandonment, redlining, racist housing policies, and people survived it. And it's also experienced one of the greatest, most apparent cases of gentrification in the city and, you know, in the world. It's a notable case uh, with the massive development and displacement that's been here. And yet, there are still people here who have been in the community for years, who have been through other adversities, who've made lives that are not sad lives, that are something to be celebrated and something that has meaning and strength. And so, yeah, with a bunch of data about how people told us 
how much trouble they were going through. We felt like that didn't necessarily say what we really thought people were saying, which is we're still here and we made it. And yeah, the world is tough and this has been a very tough time. And people's, the need for real solutions to people's issues, to the pre-existing problems in society, economic inequality, structural racism, food insecurity and food apartheid, the need for real solutions around food sovereignty and social justice is still there. And the fact that people rose up to actually activate themselves during the pandemic speaks to the solutions that we need to see. Um, how did you guys go about um, collecting all the artwork? Like, how did you guys decide what's put this painting and what's put that? Um, through a very collective, complicated process. Uh, basically, we talked as a group on a weekly basis and just kind of kept moving forward. So first, we were brainstorming, you know, what survey questions we wanted, and after, you know, making sure everything, everyone was on board each step of the way, we'd move forward. And similarly with the art, first we started thinking about, okay, well, how could people submit things? Well, they could submit objects. Well, they could also submit artwork. Well, what should that artwork look like? Should we make a template? Should we also say bring whatever you want? And really, we, with some ideas in mind, we reached out directly to the people in the food pantry line at the main distribution we do on South Third, uh, between Bedford and Driggs, but also some other sites. And we also reached out to our neighbors at El Puente who uh, submitted things through their group, uh, Los Muralistas, and then also through youth who were involved in our programs. Um, so yeah, we reached out to partner organizations and we reached out to people in the food pantry line. And what are your like top three favorite objects in the museum? Oh, good question. I almost have to walk around to look. I love the paintings from El Puente. Um, I think that they're just uh, really beautiful. And also, I like the fact that they focus on the stories of individual people who are real people. I also really like Denise's artwork. I think it's colorful. I think it's poignant. And I think she has some that are really representative of what was going on. And I love the objects in general. I think all the objects in their own ways are interesting little reminders of either things that people were doing to get them through, hobbies, um, passions, or also items that just were dear to them. The exhibit is filled with items that help the residents of Los Sures not just survive, but live through the pandemic. Home knit gloves and mittens, a rosary, favorite foods, and pictures of pets. Zach also talked about the community's reaction to the museum. Many visitors explained that the exhibit actually helped them process what they've gone through over the past year. Um, so we've had people come in and say that they were touched. We've had people come in and say that they haven't processed it before. Um, and then we have people who came in who participated, you know, seniors in the neighborhood who lived through so many changes in the neighborhood, who are still here now, who, you know, drew something small. And to see them come in and realize that they were a part of it and they got to express themselves, it, it was really heartwarming. And how about um, you or your team, like how this made you feel? Um, you know, in a lot of ways it was easy. Um, we were doing this work already during the pandemic and we knew that it was a crucial time. And so by having a strong group of people who uh, are dedicated, passionate, and uh, just down, uh, it made it very easy for the work to be spread out among many people and for it to be very clear what we wanted to do. So it's felt really special. Again, it's, it feels like it worked. And you know, more than anything, we're not always visible. So you know, people who are you know, helping other people get by day to day in this country, uh, and those people who we are working with and who are part are volunteers as well as the people we're serving, you know, it's one community, to be able to see it work and flourish and people come together in it, um, it's, felt, it's felt just really gratifying. And what do you hope that other people that are not from this neighborhood, what do you hope they get out of it if they come to visit? You know, people have so many ideas of what Williamsburg means to them and so many conceptions but again, without necessarily knowing what people who live here might view it as or might know it as and the stories that are from here. So we hope that uh, there's a little awareness of some of the stories of people who experienced problems during the pandemic. Um, but we hope that this inspires people to be more aware, but also to think about, you know, how they've gotten to where they are and what else they can do. Sobre slash Vivid will be on display through July 31st. The Museo de los Sures is open to the public on Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays from 4 to 8 p.m. 
and it's located at 120 South 1st Street in Brooklyn. We also have these details in our show notes. Next, we're sharing a story from one of our neighbors, like you. Today, I'm excited to introduce you to Christine Soroka. She's been working with the Los Sudes Food Pantry for just over three years now. Chris helped put together the Sobre Slash Vivid, Superando la Pandemia en Los Sudes exhibit, and is an artist herself. She's also lived in the neighborhood for over 30 years. We asked Chris about how the gallery came together out of such a difficult time. The project started as um, basically an interest. I'm basically the numbers guy. I gather it and I process the information, and I would talk a lot about the information with the, um, the director of social services and the director of Comida, and we came in contact with a grad student from NYU who was um, getting a doctorate in English in the influence of Spanish on the English language. Her name is Laura Alfonso. And we started to take some surveys and did some focus groups just to sort of flesh out the information we were getting from the statistics and just talking among ourselves. And after we processed the information from the surveys and started looking at it, we were very much interested in showing the uh, visuals from the information we had gathered in, in the form of statistics and charts, which, by the way, I, I did. And we also wanted to do art. So we started to talk to the community and gather art from the community, which was really exciting and fun. We had people from the age of two and a half to over 80 participate. And it's not stopping either. One of our goals was this was to be a living show. So we are still gathering work. It's It's been a really exciting thing and we've been uh, talking to people, getting them to sit down getting, and with their kids giving us drawings and talking to local artists who, some of whom have submitted work, some of whom have just now submitted work. So it's, it's a bigger show than it was. So we're, we're hoping to, to keep it going in some way because we are starting to get to such a such a destination point here that it's nice to be able to step back and after having been here for over 30 years know that there are other people who've been here as long as I have and want to want to still uh, be a part of things going on so for for me it's the whole experience of just being a member of of uh, Le Fleury's Lucha team and and uh, getting getting out and talking to my community. And of course, we asked for Chris's favorite New York City, in this case, her favorite South Williamsburg sound. Well, with regard to this neighborhood, uh, the sounds of dominoes slapping is a, is a summer sound. And... Um, Spanish music is a summer sound. That's all for today. Thanks for tuning in. Like the folks at Los Sures, art is helping many people acknowledge and understand their experience of living through a global pandemic. That's one reason why we love to share the works of local artists. So make sure to sign up for our newsletter and visit our website to check out everything that we've featured. We've written about artists like Derek Melander, who creates large geometric sculptures from carefully folded and stacked secondhand clothing, as well as Aisha Reyes, whose work strongly revolves around issues of identity, class, and race. Also, if you know a New York City-based artist or are one yourself, please drop us a note at hello at epicenter-nyc.com. Our intro music is All the Pretty Horses by Karavika. 
You can find more of their music on their website linked to in our podcast description.